Hi everyone, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn segment. My name is Eva, and I'm an environmental science student at the University of Florida and part of the 2019 cohort of Audubon's Conservation Leadership Initiative. Today's video is going to be all about John James Audubon. Now, there's a good chance you already recognize the name, but how much do you really know about him? What did he do? Why is he famous? Why did the founders of one of the oldest environmental conservation movements name their organization after him? I'll get to the answers of all of these questions in today's video, but let's start at the beginning. John James Audubon was born in 1785 in the French colony of Saint Domingue, which was part of an island in the Caribbean that's now Haiti. He was born the illegitimate son of Jean Audubon, a sea captain who owned plantations there, and his mistress, Mademoiselle Rabine. But he was raised in France by his stepmother, Anne Audubon. As a young boy, John didn't have much of an interest in school and preferred to spend most of his free time outdoors, hunting, fishing, and drawing birds. When he was 18, he was sent to America to live on his family's estate near Philadelphia, where he settled down and got married to a woman named Lucy Bakewell, with whom he had two sons. It was here that John conducted the first known North American bird banding experiment. By tying strings around the legs of eastern Phoebes that he would see near his home, he was able to learn that they returned to the same nesting sites every single year. Now, although we don't typically use strings anymore, bird banding is still a very common method used today to track birds and learn about things like their lifespans and migration patterns. If you missed the Lunch and Learn session on bird bands from April 2nd, feel free to go back and check it out for lots more information. But for now, let's look at some of Audubon's artwork as I continue with the story. John and Lucy struggled to make ends meet after several failed business ventures, so John eventually began selling some of his artwork to make extra money. At first, he was selling mostly crayon portraits of individual people, while Lucy brought in the majority of their household income working as a tutor and later opening a school for girls. On the side, though, he continued to draw birds as a hobby, and eventually reached a publishing agreement with a printer in London for his Birds of America series, which was a collection of life-sized portraits of the North American birds he observed during his expeditions down the Mississippi River. There were 435 prints in total, including species like the American bittern, shown here, the widely loved roseate spoonbill, shown here, and the eastern phoebes that we talked about earlier. Later, he would partner with William McGillivray, a Scottish ornithologist, to publish the life histories of each of the species in the series in a work titled The Ornithological Biographies. The revenue that the Audubons made from the publishing of John's prints and ornithological biographies allowed them to live comfortably, and even allowed John to travel across the country several more times in search of more bird and wildlife species. Before he died, he began his last work, The Viviparous Quadrupeds of North America, which was based on his research about American mammals, and which his sons and friend John Bachman would complete for him. John James Audubon is remembered as a naturalist, an adventurer, a hunter, an ornithologist, an artist, and a conservationist. Audubon.org writes of him, he encapsulated the spirit of young America when the wilderness was limitless and beguiling. He was a person of legendary strength and endurance, as well as a keen observer of birds and nature. Like his peers, he was an avid hunter, and he also had a deep appreciation and concern for conservation. In his later writings, he sounded the alarm about destruction of birds and habitat. This is why it makes sense that George Bird Grinnell, one of the founders of the early Audubon Society in the late 1800s, who was also tutored by Lucy Audubon, in fact, chose his name as the inspiration for the organization's earliest work to protect birds in their habitats. Today, John James Audubon is remembered every time someone drives over the Audubon Bridge on the Mississippi River, visits the Audubon Zoo in New Orleans, or walks through the Audubon Park Historic District in Manhattan. His research and artwork is still widely referenced today, inspiring young conservationists and ecologists alike and will hopefully continue to instill a sense of environmental stewardship in generations to come. So now you know all about John James Audubon and how his life's work contributed to what has become today's National Audubon Society. Hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be plenty of interesting links on today's page once you close the video, so be sure to check them out if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching, and see you tomorrow at noon for another Lunch and Learn.